Question two. Here's a list of the dried fruit 24 people like the best. Uh, complete the table for the information in the list. Okay, there's several ways of doing this. A few people try and rush it and say, All right, how many currents have I got? One, two... Uh, you've got to risk that and missing them out. So the easiest way to do this is to do one at a time. Uh, the way that I personally do this is I will go through the list. So at first one's currents, cross it off, and then add the tally. If I keep in that pattern, so sultanas, cross it off, add it to the tally, I'm not going to miss any out. Uh, let's do this quickly then. Currents, currents, raisins, raisins, sultanas, sultanas, prunes, 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 currants, currants, sultanas, sultanas, prunes, prunes, raisins. Raisins, 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 currants, currants, currants. So for the fifth line, remember to do a diagonal line through it, because now we know that's a full group of five. Makes it easier to count later on. Prunes, prunes, sultanas, 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 sultanas. Raisins, 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 sultanas, 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 prunes, prunes, and sultanas. So if we count all of these up, I've got a group of five there, so the frequency of occurrence is five. For prunes, it's also five. For raisins, one group plus another one, which means it's six. And for sultanas, that's eight. We've got five, six, seven, eight. Now, altogether, we should have 24, because that's what the question tells us. So if we add all these together, just to check, 5, 10, 16, 16, add 8 is 24. So we've got all of the data, and it's in our frequency table. Part B says to draw a suitable diagram to show the information in this table. Use the space below or the grid opposite. Now, I prefer to use the grid, so I've copied the grid onto the bottom of this page. You, of course, would have it on a separate piece of paper. Now, a suitable diagram for this kind of data, just plain frequency and four bits of information, would either be a pictogram or a bar chart. And I think a bar chart is probably one of the easiest ones to draw. So we're going to go with a bar graph. You can do this any way that you've been taught, as long as you're making sure that it's an accurate graph that represents just this data here. So I'm going to do what's called the horizontal bar graph. Um, normally you would have seen it vertical with the bars going up and down the page. This one's going to go across. So I've got four pieces of information. Uh, that's the, so the first one is uh, current. Prunes, so I'm going to miss a line between each bar, basically. Each piece of information is going to have a square between them. Raisins. Miss a square and sultanas. Now using a pencil and ruler, or in this case a straight line tool on the computer, uh, I'll draw in my axes. So first off, that's the axis that separates the title from the bars. And then I will also need a frequency. Now the frequency here, um, I wonder if there's space at the bottom for this. There is. I'm going to draw across the bottom. So the same way that you would draw any other kind of graph. Let's just extend this one down a little bit. Now I'm hoping there's enough space here. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, brilliant. Always make sure before you start drawing anything that your axes have enough space in them. Now just to draw the bars. So if we go back to our table, currents. Let's just add the S on the end there. Currents had 5. So again, using a ruler, I'm going to start at currents and draw a bar that comes out to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down one square and back to the bar. 
Now, I've actually forgotten to write on the frequency here, but I think it should have been quite obvious before I started drawing that, that I was going to use every square to equal one. It's an easy scale to use, but don't forget to write it on. You'll lose one of these three precious marks if you forget to do this. And make a little note that this is frequency as well. And then just back to finishing off our bars. Now we know what the frequency is. So prunes is 5, so miss off that square, take it to 5, one square down and across. As I said, these could be bars coming up, your labels could be along the bottom, it makes zero difference here. It's all about the accuracy of the graph, not the type of graph that you do. There we go, so I've got my four bars, I've got an accurate, evenly spaced frequency, each bar is labelled, and for good measure I'm just going to put a little subtitle to the side. You probably don't need it, but it's always a good idea to do it on any graph. So we're just going to call this favourite fruits. I'm going to call it favourite dried fruits. But at this stage, it's as long as it's got a title. We're guaranteed there. We've got everything we would need for a diagram to represent information.